As of today, December the 10th, Thursday, Trump and his allies, and that includes a long list, Trump campaign's elite strike force, individuals aligned with the MAGA world such as Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood, congressmen like Mike Kelly from Pennsylvania, voters, poll watchers, the haves and the have-nots, all of them have filed 55 lawsuits post-election and have won a single case losing 54. And they have saved the worst one for the last. That's the lawsuit that was filed by the state of Texas against four other states. And 17 states have joined in support of the request made by Texas. And feeling the need to join the party, Mr. Trump has also requested to intervene in his personal capacity as a candidate for re-election. Trump has made history here, folks. The only president ever to be part of a case in the Supreme Court that sought to overturn the election. So after failing to produce any evidence that could merit a favorable verdict in 54 cases, they have now raised the bar and gone all the way to the Supreme Court. 17 states along with Texas are challenging the elections administered by four states, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin. George Conway, an attorney and co-founder of the Lincoln Project, wrote in the Washington Post, no constitutional provision, no statute, and no principle of law gives one state the standing to challenge another state's handling of an election. In our system, Texas is not the boss of Pennsylvania. Allowing such suits would invite a multi-state free-for-all every time a presidential election is held. And the merits of the case? Conway says there is none. It's a recycling of failed claims, whining about poll watchers being excluded, nonsense about mysterious late-night dumps of thousands of ballots, fantasies about rigged Dominion voting machines, a cuisine art of allegations rejected by courts from Philadelphia to Carson City. If the Supreme Court rules in favor of the Texas Attorney General, the lawsuit will allow state legislatures in four states to appoint electors swinging the election towards President Donald Trump. It's a ridiculous case, but a Hail Mary nonetheless. It is one thing to file a lawsuit, and it is another thing to prove that there is a problem and we need a remedy for that problem, but it is your responsibility to prove that there was a problem in the first place. So let's go one by one. Poll watchers excluded is a theory that from Donald Trump to Rudy Giuliani to Sidney Powell keep saying on TV. Remember the Trump campaign attorney who told the court there is a non-zero number of poll watchers in the courtroom? So there is no evidence that poll watchers were excluded because they were never excluded. Second, the mysterious late night dumps the Republicans including moron Senator Rand Paul keep talking about when the counting starts after the election day is over. How many votes will be there to be counted? Tens of thousands to millions depending upon the county. Is that a dump? And poll after poll showed that Republicans preferred to vote in person and Democrats preferred to vote by mail. So if you count the in-person votes first, the first huge dump is majority Republican votes. And if you count the mail-in ballots late, the late dump is majority Democratic votes. Even a person without a degree and with basic mathematical sense will be able to prove that these so-called dumps have no merit to make a case for fraud. It is just the way some states counted their votes. In person, aka Republican votes first and mail-in ballots, aka Democratic votes next. Then the Dominion voting systems. These voting systems have a paper trail. During the Georgia recount, the state actually used the paper trail to count the votes and the end result was the same as the original result. Biden won, Trump lost. So there is only TV worthy evidence of fraud due to Dominion voting systems. There is a paper trail and each vote can be proved if necessary. The lawsuit asks the Supreme Court to declare that the 62 electoral votes from Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan and Wisconsin cannot be counted. In the old days, the GOP will do voter suppression, enact some ridiculous laws that will suppress votes from unwanted areas. For example, keeping one ballot box in a county that runs in tens of miles so that people are forced to drive 20 mile up and 20 mile down and instead of voting, they will, they will just rather be home. Then you can bring a lawsuit that asks former felons to pay up if they want to vote. Simple things, but targeted suppression of voters. Ask for ID, ask for this, ask for that, keep changing the laws so that less number of people vote especially in areas where opposition can run up the numbers. After the election was over, Trump and his campaign stepped up. GOP moved 
from pre-election suppression to post-election mass disenfranchisement. Do not count Wayne County in Michigan. There is a problem in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We need to double check Maricopa County in Arizona. And all they selected counties that are strongly democratic. It was reported that Senator Lindsey Graham asked Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger if he can, under the rules of high signature mismatches, can invalidate mail-in ballots of entire county. Now, after those things failed, the Trump group has stepped up to the plate and are now asking the Supreme Court to throw out the results of four states. You know, the only thing that is going to be thrown out is the lawsuit. It's the worst case ever filed in the history of the United States. Thanks for watching. If you like, please subscribe.